Shopify grows your business no matter how far or big you grow. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Whether you're selling your fans' next favorite shirt or an exclusive piece of podcast merch, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Allbirds, Rothy's, Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash income, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash income now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. This is The Planted Runner. I'm Coach Claire Bartholik. When daydreaming about your next vacation, it's easy to get lost down an internet rabbit hole of tropical islands, fantastic restaurants, and amazing natural wonders. We'll research the coolest sights to see, maybe the most unique places to shop, or what the locals do for fun. And for us runners, we look for places to run. Maybe all we need is a hotel gym to get in a few treadmill miles before the kids wake up. Or maybe we're scoping out Strava routes or even Googling local running shops for the best intel. On the one hand, shouldn't vacations be about rest and relaxation? But surely that doesn't mean we should just skip our runs and workouts and potentially lose fitness that we've worked so hard for. What's the right way to balance your training when you're traveling, especially if you have a family? Let's find out. Welcome to The Planted Runner. I'm Coach Claire Bartholik, and my mission is to help you improve your running, your mindset, and your life with science-backed training and plant-based nutrition. Today, we're going to tackle the topic of training on trips, specifically vacations with your loved ones. We'll get into how to plan your vacation for the ideal time in your training cycle, how to stay fit and healthy while still having fun, and if you do decide to skip training altogether, how much fitness, if any, will you lose while lounging in the sun? Of course, the best way to travel and train at the same time is at a running retreat. This September, join me and a small group of runners for an incredible running vacation here in Asheville, North Carolina. We're staying in deluxe riverfront cabins where we can run right out our doors. We'll feast on chef-catered plant-based meals, enjoy classes and coaching, and so much more. To learn all about the cool things we've got planned, go to theplanetrunner.com slash retreat. Spaces are very limited, so sign up today. Don't forget to stay tuned all the way to the end of the episode for another Mental Strength Minute. Fortify your mind in 60 seconds or less. And oh yeah, one more thing, I promise, before we get into it, this is a great time to remind you about our monthly Apple Podcast Review Contest. All you need to do is write a five-star review, and one lucky runner will receive free access to one of my online running masterclasses. Reviews are truly the easiest and most impactful way of helping this show, and I choose a new winner every month. It's been said that vacations ruin training and training ruins vacations. Some of us will be so focused on getting our runs and workouts in that we get stressed about fitting it all in, which in turn stresses the rest of the family out. The fun trip you've planned becomes anything but fun and relaxing. Or we get the opposite route and completely toss the schedule out. We might indulge in a few too many pina coladas or go back for thirds at the all-you-can-eat buffet. And then we end up feeling guilty that we've blown all our hard work. It doesn't have to be like this. The first thing to consider is the timing of your trip. Ideally, you plan to have your vacation right after your goal race. That way you can relax, recover, and indulge completely guilt-free. In fact, I recommend that you don't run at all in the seven days after a marathon or even longer to give not only your legs a break and a chance to heal, but to give yourself a mental break as well. It's a perfect time for that tropical trip. 
But unfortunately, life does not always fit perfectly neatly into your ideal running schedule. Kids, spouses, work, or that great travel deal that you just couldn't pass up often don't fall in line with your perfect plan, so you need to adjust. But how? The first place to start is to look at where you are in your running cycle. If you are just at the beginning of a big training block, a week in the Caribbean is probably not going to matter that much in terms of how you will race in three or four months. But throw in a week of margaritas and beach lounging six weeks from your major marathon of the year, and you might run into a little trouble. One way to plan your trip would be to look at your overall training schedule and see if you can make the week of your trip a down week. Down weeks are scheduled weeks of training that follow two to three harder weeks designed to help your body absorb all that good training well so that you can continue to build without overtraining the following week. If you plan for a down week while you're away, then you can get away with a few easy runs and jump back into your schedule when you return without missing a beat. You might not even have to move an entire week around if you get a little creative. So let's say you're leaving on a Saturday and there's no way to get in that long run. Try and see if you can squeeze it in on Friday instead so that your vacation is more rest and easy runs. Unless your partner is also a runner, it can be really tough to plan a three-hour run while the rest of the family waits for you to finish. Most runners are active people that choose equally active vacations, so think about what you'll do on your trip and how that will affect your training. If your idea of a great vacation is trekking in the Himalayas, then you're clearly going to be getting in plenty of exercise and keeping up your fitness, so you don't have to worry about missing your four-mile easy run that day. On the other hand, if you're going on a cruise with the kiddos with that all-you-can-eat buffet, you're going to want to hop on the ship treadmill or do a million laps around the boat before they wake up to offset some of the indulgence. As you plan your trip, don't forget to plan your runs as well. You can use Map My Run or other running apps to help plan your routes. Doing this ahead of time can save time on your trip so you can just run and then have more time for fun. An even better resource are the local running shops. Search for a shop in the town you plan to visit and call ahead or check their website for good places to run or even group runs you can join. They can be a wealth of information to help you find safe and fun routes in a new city. If there's no running store in the area, don't be shy about asking the hotel or restaurant staff if they know about safe or unsafe places to run. Speaking of safety, you'll want to be more aware of your surroundings in an unfamiliar place. Leave the headphones at the hotel and enjoy your new surroundings, taking in all of the sights and sounds. And don't forget to tell your family your planned route before you head out the door, just in case. Even better is to have a tracking app on your phone so your partner knows exactly where you are. If nothing seems suitable for a run outside, 30 minutes on the hotel treadmill is not the worst thing in the world, I promise. Add in 10 minutes of strength training after that, and you've got a solid workout in before breakfast. Exactly what kind of strength work should you be doing? And what about that speed session you have on your schedule? I'll go over those right after the break. Greetings from Evergreen Podcasts. We're rolling out a listener survey, and we want to hear from you. The information in the survey will help us gather statistics and in turn make our shows more appealing to advertisers. I know most people don't like ads, but this is one of the only ways our shows make money and help keep their lights on. We promise it will only take a few minutes, but the impact on our podcasts will be tremendous. As a token of our appreciation, we'll randomly select one lucky participant each month to win an exclusive merchandise package from Evergreen Podcasts. Head to evergreenpodcast.com slash listener survey to help a show and possibly get some free stuff for doing so. We can't thank you enough for the support. Now back to the show. Welcome back to The Planted Runner. I'm Coach Claire Bartholik. So you've planned out a glorious vacation in the tropics, done a few easy runs, and now you've got speed work on the schedule. Speed work can be more challenging while you're traveling, especially if you're used to running on the track at home. And if your trip is hot, humid, sunny, or hilly, it's going to be even more difficult. The best choices here are to either skip the track work 
and opt for longer intervals that can be done on the roads or, again, use the good old treadmill. Arranging your runs before you leave so you don't have your most important or intense runs during your trip can save a lot of hassle and stress because you are on vacation to relax and have fun, right? Being flexible with your running while you're on your trip can make everyone's trip more fun. So while you do want to plan things out as much as you can, allowing room for mixing it up can be great. So maybe you decide to sleep in one morning, but you spend five hours sightseeing on foot. That is great aerobic exercise, so no harm there. What about hiking, kayaking, or swimming? All great options. If you do have a chance to run, but you can't get in that six mile tempo you had planned for the day, chop it down to three miles with a little warm up and cool down and call it a day. Maintaining the frequency of your running is far more important than distance or intensity. Now that we've got the running covered, let's talk about your strength work. Keeping up your strength training can be somewhat tricky on your trip, especially if you're the type that likes a longer session a couple days a week. I recommend that you commit to short but effective 8 to 10 minute body weight routines that you can do each morning or evening in your hotel room while everyone else is brushing their teeth. I use a Tabata timer app on my phone and I program it for 20 seconds on, 10 seconds rest for four cycles of four, and I can get a complete full body workout in eight minutes. You're on vacation and you've got better things to do than pump iron for an hour. You'll want to include one exercise for each major muscle group, legs, arms and shoulders, core, and full body. For example, you could do squats, push-ups, lunges, and sit-ups. Another could be hold plank, chair dips, reverse lunges, and one-legged deadlifts. Or you could do the lunge matrix, which is a set of lunges in each direction, and then switching legs. You might be surprised at how sweaty you'll get in just eight minutes, and I promise you that it's super effective. If you don't want to even think about remembering what exercises to do for how long, a great solution is to hit up YouTube. I've got a collection of 10 to 20 minute workouts specifically geared for runners that you can do with or without weights anywhere in the world. Head to YouTube and search the Planet Runner and I've got you covered. But what if you just want to call it good and not run or work out at all for the whole trip? Will you really have to go back to square one with your fitness? No. You will probably lose less fitness than you think. After a week of no running, it will take you just about a week or two of good running to get right back where you were fitness-wise. In fact, studies show that there is very minimal fitness loss after taking 7 to 10 days off. Sure, you might feel a little rusty that first day back on the track after your trip, but physically, not a lot has changed in your fitness, especially if you had a trip full of activities. You might even feel a fitness boost from the time off if you train hard regularly. Sometimes we don't realize where the line is between good training and overtraining, and a little time off can help push the reset button, letting damaged tissue and nagging injuries heal, as well as getting a mental refresh. After all, there's nothing like a good break of not running to show you just how important it is to you. So have fun, do a little work, and your running will be right back where you left it when you get back. Now it's time for the Mental Strength Minute. Fortify your mind in 60 seconds or less. Today's topic is sneak up on your fitness. Humans are by nature impatient. We don't always mind working hard, but we want results as soon as possible. Problem with that is that our bodies hate change. Lose weight and your appetite goes up. Run more and eventually you'll hit a plateau and stop adapting. The trick is to sneak up on your fitness so your body doesn't fight you so hard. If fat loss is your goal, take your time with it. If running faster is your goal, have a gradual, sustainable approach instead of going all out to burnout. When we make progress through slow, steady, and consistent effort, instead of through dramatic change, we are much more likely to reach our goals and stay there. Thank you for listening to The Planted Runner, part of the Evergreen Podcast Network. Don't forget that you can win free access to one of my sprint session masterclasses just for writing an Apple podcast review. 
So be sure to write yours right after your run today. Reviews are the number one way to boost this show's reach, and it's a great way to tell me what you'd like to hear next because I read every single one. Have a great run today. Sports stars. They're like superheroes. But they're actually real. Which is why we've made a podcast about them. You see... They've all got a story. But too many of these stories were cut short. Kobe Bryant. Payne Stewart. Flo jo, Phil Hughes. Justin Fashion You. We're writing episodes about all of them. And sadly, many more. Death of a Sports Star. A new series from Crowd Network.